Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I'm getting ready to do some things with antennas and coax. And so I thought I'd spend some time on LMR 400 coax, putting a connector on it, a little bit about the coax, and so on. So, here's what's going to happen. I need to put a connector on this end right here of the LMR 400 coax, which is stiffer than a son of a gun. It's a, a little hard to work with, but it's also generally considered about the best coax you can get in amateur radio without getting exotic. Um, this is very low loss, extremely sturdy, all the uh, wonderful things that make coax wonderful. Okay, so uh, the idea is to put the connector on here and then we'll attach this to the antenna as it goes on the roof. We'll unroll the coax till we know we have enough and then put another connector on the end. So that way we get the right amount of coax, uh, not too much or much worse, too little. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to trim it. I just want to show you what our aim is in trimming. Uh, we're going to use these crimp connectors. The crimp connectors I got at uh, QS Radio. That's Queen Sugar and then the word radio.com. This will be the sleeve that uh, goes over the coax. This uh, my fingers really aren't that blue. Um, and then this goes over the, the coax. So the way it's going to go on is like this. Okay, the sleeve. And then we're going to use the coax strippers to do the following. Here's the center conductor. In this cage, a big, hairy, fat wire in there. I think it's number 12. It might be number 10. It is big. But what is interesting about it, if you look very carefully at the tip here, let's get the tip all the way up here to the top, is you'll note that the color inside there is not copper colored, but is silvery. Now here's an example of a cut piece of ordinary household wire, and you can see in here that that copper wire looks copper all the way through, whereas this LMR uh, coax right here uh, looks copper on the outside and has a core of something else I believe steel. Okay, so that makes this thing very strong. Looking also at uh, what we have um, here, we have the um, center conductor, the foam insulation. Now foam insulation is proving a little weird to, uh, to deal with. One thing you've got to be aware of with the foam insulation is to not put too sharp a turn in the coax because over time the foam will migrate and allow the center conductor to touch the edge. Now notice also that um, before we get to the braid there is actually some aluminum wrap around it, either aluminum or in something. It's a foil. It's very thin. And then the braid goes over the top of it. Now the way the connector is going to go, we're going to put this over this. Okay, and it's going to go over that braid. Or the, the shield, okay? Now the reason for this section right here is to keep the shield separated from the center conductor. Now I might point out since an upcoming bal uh, video is on balance that this is an unbalanced coax. The outer shield is at ground level in theory and the inner shield or the uh, inner conductor is what carries the AC current. In a balanced system each side go back and forth carrying it. That's not true in in unbalanced. So that'll go up over the top and then we're going to squeeze really hard right there with the tool and then solder that connection there. Uh, with this particular uh, wire size right here you don't really need to to solder it. It is so close to the center conductor size 
that in essence it fills it okay so you I did experiment on another piece of coax was actually just crimping that on and it seemed to work fine but we're going to solder it today okay now the uh, kit that we're going to use is as I said from QS radio and it's this kit right here which is available on their website if you want it I kind of like it um, I've had it for oh a year or two now and uh, it just seems to have everything in one place which is what their intention is to put it all in one place this is uh, QS radios card here qsradio.com uh, don't put QSR radio it's qsradio.com um, the instructions are in here for attaching so-called crimp on connectors when in fact you have to solder the center conductor um, this shows that a little tool is used to prepare the coax this one is for RG58 or RG59 or uh, RG8X this one is for RG213, RG8 or um, LMR 400 this would be for LMR 240 this one here now so the things you need are here these are some big hairy wire cutters and uh, they throw in they threw in these little kind of wire strippers for very small wires that you can use that was just an extra that they did they also threw in the little um, LED uh, flashlight to just to uh, I'm not even sure the thing works anymore. Yeah, it works. I um, haven't figured out exactly what that has to do with coaxial cable, but it's in the kit, or at least the one I got was as a promotion. This is the big honking tool that we are going to use to crimp the cable. Okay, now this comes with jaws, and yes, that's the term. This is the one that is used for uh, the main uh, uh, sleeve and then we have other jaws two other sets of jaws okay the this set of jaws right here will do smaller cable sizes and this set of jaws is set up for Anderson power pole connectors you can do that with this too so we're going to use oh and the screwdriver the screwdriver yes to change the jaws you have to take this screw out right here okay and um, then you can slide the jaws out see and uh, put in a different set of jaws and this doesn't screw into the jaw per se it just holds it in the right place so it was kind of nice of them to provide a nice little Phillips screwdriver to do that so this makes their little kit I've used it many times so let's take this out if we can get it out okay in this little stripper there are three cutters and you can just see them in there can just see them down in there three cutters okay now the cutters gradually wear out so on the back are little places you can put this key wrench and you can't get this out by hand you gotta pull it out like this okay and you put them in here and a plus turn which is clockwise will tighten it so it'll cut more and then the term counterclockwise will pull it away so it will cut less now this one right here has to cut all the way down to the uh, to the bone I call it okay you want to cut everything down to the center conductor without nicking the center conductor the next cut cuts right in here uh, cutting through the foil so you can get the foil off of there and then you have the braid and then when you separate the braid like this and put this on 
then the braid will go into the socket okay and then the braid will go on the outside and then the shield crimp will be over that to hold that in place forever okay so let's do that now with this piece of cable now I'm going to tell you a little bit about LMR 400 it's it's big it's the same size as RG8 well RG8 was a kind of World War II era this is put out by Times Microwave and let's see if we can find it on here here it is there we go okay Times Microwave Systems the manufacturer of the cable their phone number so you can get more uh, the date of manufacture and then this is how many feet at this point now they put this text every two feet and so if you want to know how long your cable is just look at the foot indicator okay so this one two four four seven oh feet uh, from the production run and so you can just go down the number of feet that you want till you find the right number and cut it off there so this is and turn this upside down LMR 400 um, coaxial let's get finger in here so that uh, it focuses this is a good time to talk about the LMR series of cables this brochure actually is from the Times Microwave website uh, just timesmicrowave.com uh, you can tell right from the cover the market there they're looking for it's all these fixed installations like cell phone towers and so on and you can see in this one and this is typical of most of them you can see how many cables are running up and down that tower there also note the kinds of connectors they're talking about there not one of those is our standard PL259 or a SO249 they are very different microwave type cables these people are into microwave okay so they've got uh, several different flavors of everything you can get the standard cables you can get them LMR FR for fire retardant LLPL are most rugged they're plenum rated that means you can put them in heating vents and it won't ruin the cable uh, the DB are watertight cables with an inert flooding compound injected in the braid to completely eliminate the possibility of water migration and then there's the LMR Ultraflex which would be a lot more flexible than this stuff because boy that's stiff and then they have it in 75 ohm versions the standard ones are 50 ohm okay so uh, in the different types of coax there's little kits that they have for cutting and putting on connectors and so on little kits for mounting everything like that um, different types of connectors note that none are PL259 they've got SMA BNC TNC okay and note it it claims here drop-in replacement for RG58 and RG142 so it's good for cabinet interkicks antenna jumpers RFID all kinds of stuff lots of tools to sell now LMR 195 is not a kind that is used by hams it's uh, pretty thin pretty small and you can see from the picture again to whom they're marketing um, more information on connectors it says what it's ideal for um, in there none mentions uh, RRF so let's talk about LMR 240 which is used in the amateur radio market okay and again no connection there to PL259 the hardware and installation tools are for microwave now I want you to notice a little bit about this because again this indicates the market this is your attenuation right here okay at frequency the lowest frequency they mention is 30 megahertz which is about the highest 
we would normally use it. They also have the attention for um, 50 megahertz, which is nice. Um, we're not quite 400. Here's the 400 that we want, LMR 400. It says it's a drop-in replacement for RG8 and 9913 air dielectric type cable. It's ideal for antenna feeder runs. Okay, good. Public safety installations, Wi-Fi. Uh, again, the connectors, uh, BNC's ends. Okay. Uh, here's some more connectors that are available for it. Um, again, no PL259. Um, all the different tools and crimps and grips and things that you should possibly want with it. Now let's spend a moment on the spec page, okay? What we're dealing with here is basically the ordinary LMR 400, which does not say a direct burial, not that. Um, the jacket is polyethylene, black, okay? And environmental specifications uh, it can get pretty dug on top. Operating temperature up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I know it gets warm in Arizona, but it doesn't get that hot. However, standing out in the sun can still get pretty hot. Mechanical specifications. Here's one that's quite important. Performance property. Uh, bend radius and in installation. One. Okay. Now um, is inches and 25.4 millimeters okay uh, other things about if you're doing a bunch bending moment the weight of the cable the tensile strength no it's hundred and sixty pounds so if you dangle something on that that weighs more than that it will uh, break it flat plate crush if it's crushed in between things up to forty pounds now the construction specifications here the inner conductor is solid and that is copper coated aluminum. Um, copper co coated aluminum is what that uh, thing refers to. The dielectric is a foam which means that the inner conductor can wander a bit. The outer conductor is aluminum tape. Now note what that means. Aluminum tape. Uh, tape in this case has a bit of an adhesive on it because it sure is hard to get off. You have to be pretty careful about getting that off. Uh, the braid is tinned copper which means it's copper with solder on it and the jacket is made of the polyethylene. Uh, the electrical specifications, the propagation velocity is 84 percent of the speed of light Okay, it gives you the dielectric constants, some time delays, impedance, capacitance, and ductance. Now the shielding effectiveness has to do with how well does it keep the signal inside the cable away from things outside the cable and vice versa, 90 dB. Okay, uh, gives you the DC resistance, ohms per foot, etc. The voltage it can withstand at 2500, okay. 2500 volts and the jacket will not spark through until 8000 volts. The peak power you can put through this thing is 16 kilowatts which is well above amateur radio. Okay now um, I'll just point out here this bend radius repeated if you're going to bend it multiple times make sure it's a four inch bend radius. That means it's it takes a little while to bend around, okay? Now here are the frequencies. The ones of interest to amateurs are the HF where you get per hundred feet only seven tenths of a dB. This is very very good cable. At VHF nine tenths of a dB. At two meters one and a half dB. Okay? 220 you're gonna get 1.9 and at 440 says 450 uh, 2.7 decibels per 100 feet Now, 2.7 decibels means that you're losing about half 
the power. But that's pretty crazy. You can send, uh, you know, if you've got a 100 watt rig, well, let's, uh, a lot of rigs these days are 50 watts. Okay, 50 watts, it'll get down to 25 by the time it's to the antenna. And again, the average power that the, um, not the peak power, but the average power that the thing contain in kilowatts, 3.3 kilowatts at, on HF. By the time you get up to 450, you're down to 830 watts. Any more than that, you'll have an issue. And again, they show what their, their market is right there. Now, just for those of you who are kind of curious, you see it occasionally for people who are doing really exotic things. Long antenna cable runs, high power apps, um, private land, mobile radio, Wi-Fi, stuff like that, is the 600 cable. The 600 cable is even thicker than this. Constructed the same way, but thicker than this and far more expensive. So if you're an avid DXer and have lots of experience in there, just want that last little tiny bit of attenuation. For example, on on uh, HF down here, okay, it says on the LMR 400 is 0.7 dB. Here it's 0.4 dB. So by going to this vastly more expensive cable, you are saving 0.3 dB. 0.3. That's not noticeable on your on your scope but some people have the money and want to spend it it will take up to 40 kilowatts <laughs> not a good thing but 5.5 uh, average kilowatts on HF and it does work pretty well up here in the microwave region too it's after all built by a microwave company okay we now know all about what the manufacturer times microwave would have us know what we want to do is now I've adjusted this because I was having some trouble with it. That's where this came from. This was my experimenter right here. Given that this stuff cost me a dollar ten a foot, uh, I don't uh, cut it lightly. Our club uh, maintains a supply of coax. So you can go to the club and, and buy a cable. They keep uh, LMR 400 and, and they keep LMR 240. Uh, they get it from a place in Grand Junction that is not an amateur radio shop. We don't have one of those here, but is one of the ubiquitous two-way radio shops that keep everybody's uh, two-way radios and stuff in their trucks working. And if you tell them you're ham, you might get a, a fairly good price for this. I paid uh, for quite a bit to have it because I've been doing all these antenna videos and and I've ran out of coax. So it's not a very good thing to do when somebody sends you an antenna to test and don't have any coax. So I pulled out my checkbook and wrote a check to the club treasurer and bought some coax for this. Okay, now they say to leave. First of all, we're going to do it this way with the little drawing on the top. Okay, and they say to leave about an inch. Well, I'm a little conservative. Okay, now this goes this away around the thing, and you do it for quite a while until it feels like it's done cutting whatever it's going to cut, and then open it up, pull it out. Now you've got three cuts. Uh, this cut right here. Uh, that cut right there you pull off and you'll have just the center conductor. That cut right there should come off with the braid but not the uh, dielectric foam and this section should just come off and leave the, brave, uh, the braid and the foam the way it is. So we've got three different. Now there are I'm sure a million different ways of of cutting things a knife might be good here's something I've been trying uh, what this does I've got this 
Let me just jump in right here uh, with a bit of a confession. I'm going to cut out the part of this video about putting a connector on it because I totally botched it. Uh, and I'm not set to put on another connector uh, right at the moment. So, uh, I'm going to let this video just be about the cable itself. I did eventually get a connector on there that I do have confidence in, but believe me, it was an inelegant way of going about it. So I'll try again more on the mounting uh, in some other video. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoy the comedy speed up, and at the end, uh, you'll be looking for a 73, but I won't give that just yet. Let's take a look as we zip through the process of getting that cable on. There's uh, solder in between the center conductor and the braid. It's a little hard to see in the video, but it's there. And we're in good shape. It's done. Wasn't that easy. Woo! Wow! I'll have to edit some of that out. So the net of this is I'll be putting an antenna up tomorrow and then attaching the other end of the coax. And I'll try and learn what I can from this video because, boy, it, that showed as much frustration as it can be in real life, okay? Uh, in theory, you just twirl the little tool and everything is happiness, uh, but we see that uh, sometimes uh, reality dictates otherwise. One thing we want to protect is that foam insulation in there. We don't want that to be torn away. Similarly, we protect the shield around it, and then we want to make sure that the connection here uh, the, the connection here is nice and clean and will go into an SO239 very nicely. Okay, so if you will please click like, that helps bring more people to the channel. Uh, also, if uh, you have a comment to add, please do that. Um, I'd like you also to check out the tip jar on my Patreon page. And until next time, 73.